So good afternoon to you all. My name is Bruno. Today I present to you one of my projects in the last semester, uh, the Guitar Hero, and I teach you how you can buy, uh, how you can build your own Guitar Hero. So here is the topics I will present. Uh, first introduction about the project, and I will begin present the project by the peripherals. After that, I will show to you how I construct the music, the program of the controller, the results, the list of components. So the introduction first, uh, Guitar Hero is a very famous game. I think everyone here uh, have played at least one time in your lives. Uh, the object of the game uh, is to reach the right button at the right time and to play the music correctly and increase your score. Now the peripherals of the project, uh, this is a fault of the prototype, this is this prototype here. And we start with the counters, the coders and displays. That uh, works very, in a very simple way, and that has the objective to show the score to the player. I use decade counters, BCD decoders. Here's a block diagram that represents how they work. Uh, so every time the player reaches the right button, the mirror controller sends a pulse to the first counter and increases their, uh, their count. And when the counter reaches 10, they send a pulse to the carry out that will be the clock of the second counter, the 10 counters. So uh, the decoders will just work to uh, transform the BCD numbers, the binary code numbers, to sub-segments place uh, because it's easier to, to see. The, the multiplexers are these three key, these three here, uh, and they have the objectives to uh, activate the right LEDs in the right time. I use uh, the multiplexer of three inputs, the eight outputs. Uh, the inputs are binary, binary numbers, and outputs are Johnson code numbers. Uh, you can think in, in this way. For example, here of one of the inputs, we have three in binary code, and the A1 uh, output represents the zero, B1 the one, C1 the two, D1 the three. So when we have the three in the inputs, uh, the outputs, the only output will be high is the three output and all others will be zero. That's how it works the, the multiplexer. All the capacitive sensors that I use in my project uh, is just uh, touch plates, uh, some 555 timers, a couple of resistors and capacitors. This day schematic of the circuit is a very simple circuit. You can ignore this part here. Uh, the only part that matters is until the to your third pin here. And when you variate the capacitance of the touch plate with uh, touching with your finger or some kind of metal, uh, the 555 will send a pulse in their in the output to the mirror controller. The period of the pulse is given by this equation here, uh, where the R represents the value of the resistance of this resistor, and see the capacitance of this capacitor here. Uh, now, the, how I, I build the music. So to build the music, I have some memory issues. I have to save some memory because otherwise the music will be very shortly. So uh, I build with, uh, the music with five vectors, uh, three principal vectors that are the music notes, the music tempo, the LEDs, that are vectors of 8-bit values. And I build also uh, two auxiliary vectors of 16-bit values, the vector of tempo and vector of the notes. So uh, better explain here. And so I, I build the notes vector with all the notes that has, all different notes that has in the music. Uh, in the tempo, all different times, all different tempos that we have in the music. And this is, uh, normally this is a very high, very big number because the frequencies uh, that we use are thousands of hertz. And the tempo also are quite bigger because the clock of the mirror controller is one megahertz. I divide it by eight, so one second in the real life corresponds to 62,500 uh, 62, in the uh, clock cycles. So this is a very big number. And if I construct the music tempo of uh, all these very big numbers, they will copy a lot of memory. So I, uh, as the solution I found, is like it construct uh, some vectors if uh, address vectors. So uh, this, is this is what will be played. This is the order of the music. 
00102, but the zero here corresponds to the uh, element zero in the nodes, that will be zero two. But the one uh, here corresponds to the, uh, the one element in the nodes vector, that's uh, a thousand. So I have represented the uh, uh, 16 bit numbers with an eight bit number. So that's uh, uh, how it is in the code. So the, uh, what will be placed at the nodes vector, so, but the element will be given by this vector. It's like a vector of letters. So uh, I save uh, some, some kind of uh, the half of the memory. The ledger is a very simple vector that's only choose uh, which ledger will be, will be lighted in the, in, in, in the line. This is only the, uh, the first line here. So when this one, the LED one is activated and when zero, no low LEDs are activated. Now the programming of the MIR controller. The programming is quite simple. Here is the main function here. Uh, just a function to configure the MIR controller, another function to configure the timers, and then the interrupts. Uh, I use the C language programming in a MSP 430. Uh, what are the interruptions? I don't know if everyone here knows what it is. Uh, yeah, the interruptions work like a trigger to functions. So the MIR controller will be watching some parts, and when occurs some variation in that part or that register, uh, the next instruction of the MIR controller will be start a specified function. That's a, what is an interruption. This is the button interruptions, how they work. And uh, when you press the button, uh, the, we'll be able to interrupt, interrupt you. We'll, we'll activate the function verify. That verify if the button press is the same of the, is matched with the ledger who is activated. If they match, the MIR controller will send a push to the counter, increase your score. If it doesn't match, just clear the interruption flag and back to the main function. Now the timers, I use two timers. Uh, one time is the light shifter that is responsible to uh, change the notes in the music. And another time to play the buzzer, play the notes actually. So the first time, the light shifter, they receive uh, like a value of the timer, the note duration, the, the tempo vector actually. Uh, so they will begin to count. When they reach the value of the duration of the notes, they send the interruption to the MIR controller, enter th this function. This function increment the indices. So it was playing the first note. Uh, after the interruption, we played the second note. And uh, this incrementing the indices also shift the LEDs. So the LEDs come down one line. They're then clear interruption back to the main, main function. The notes are very quickly timer. They take the, actually the period of the notes, uh, the inverse of the frequency. And every time the, the timer reach the, the frequency, the same interrupts inverts the buzzer pin. So the, what this produces is uh, some kind of square wave with a variable frequency that will produce different sounds and notes. Uh, it's a very quick, quickly timer that, uh, that has a lot of interruptions in the same second. And when uh, you get out of the interruption, you just clear the flag and back to the main function. Now the results, I have the uh, working prototype. That's here, I will demonstrate to you after that. Uh, I, I wrote three musics, uh, the Mario T music, Dragon Ball GT music, and the Tetris music. And I made a PCB project too, that is not working very well yet because I have to change some parameters of the capacitive sensors because in the PCB there you get a lot more sensitive. Uh, this is a, yeah, it's very hard to see, but uh, it's easier to see here the PCB project. So it's a, it's a very uh, a little complicated PCB project, but I think it's working well. Um, now the list of components. It's a large list of components, uh, but it's not very expensive. Exclude the MSP 430, it's about to 50 to 60 highs, something like that, uh, all these components. And I think that's my presentation. A special thanks to my partner in this project, Walter Pfeffer, that's in France right now. And do you have any questions and doubts about this project? Um, what was the most difficult part? 
actually the most difficult part is building music because uh, you have to know music, know programming, and know how to wrote that in programming language because you have to know the frequency of the notes and you have to know how to read a, a tablature. Uh, like uh, this, this is how the music is wrote. This is a, a pause in the music. So to build the music, you have to know all these things and translate it to the number, to numbers and programming language. I think that's the most hard part in this project. Anyone else? So thank you for the attention.